Skin. Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser defends against five signs of skin sensitivity and actively happening now. Local musical artists teaming up with Metro Health to reach out to the Hispanic and black communities about the importance of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. What motivated them to help? Coming up. A Democrat and a Republican reaching across the aisle to work together to tackle the immigrant problem at the southern border. The bipartisan deal they're proposing next. The fallout continues from February's winter storm that shut down the city. CPS Energy now named in two additional wrongful death lawsuits. Details coming up. And I'm tracking an upper level system that'll head into town this upcoming holiday weekend. I'll let you know what that means for rain chances and temperatures coming right up. Thinking about a new grill or maybe need a new lawnmower? You're in luck. Turns out April can be the best time to buy. Coming up, a look at some deals. The news at five starts right now. First at five, taking a look at the daily COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 249 new infections. They're bringing the total number of cases to date to 205,707. There are two new deaths to report, bringing that total number to 3,152 deaths in Bear County. 185 patients are hospitalized, 74 in the ICU, 32 are on ventilators. As of today, the Texas Department of Health Services says 496,642 people have received their first COVID vaccine dose in Bear County. 294,158 people are fully vaccinated. As more vaccines become available, SA Metro Health making sure everyone knows about it through song. Five-time Grammy Award winner Little Joe of Little Joe y La Familia lending his voice and talent in the fight against COVID-19. He and some other artists have done some public service announcements for Metro Health, urging their fans to get vaccinated and to continue protecting themselves and their families. Our Jesse DeGoyado now with what's motivated some of these performers to help reach out to especially vulnerable communities. Metro Health's public service announcement for the founder of the famed Mariachi Campanas de America, Juan Ortiz. It was a prayer that was answered. Using music they previously recorded, Juan Ortiz told Metro Health he already had the perfect song. Got the lyrics and we're ready to go, so it was a prayer that was answered. A COVID-19 survivor himself, Ortiz sings from experience. Oh my God, it was terrible. <laughs> it's just, it was, it was horrible. Yet he says it inspired him to write the lyrics. Finally found a solution. Simply Rain, a 22-year-old up-and-coming performer from San Antonio, didn't hesitate when Metro Health approached the young woman. I think sharing this important message through music is such a great way to do it, so I was on board completely. Simply Rain says not only was she given creative freedom, the PSA enabled her to reinforce the need for COVID precautions and getting vaccinated, a message she already adamantly believes. The reason why I hit home is because I do have an 81 year old grandmother. As it is, based on the more than 60% of the cases that Metro Health has ethnicity data collected, 75% of the COVID cases were Hispanic and the most deaths, 67%. 5% of the cases and 4.4% of the COVID related deaths were among San Antonio's black community. Be it in Spanish, with English subtitles, or not, the message is still the same. Nothing's going to get better unless we all work together to make it get better. Jesse DeGollado, KSAT 12 News. Great message there. Now on to the latest efforts to catch a killer. Crime Stoppers now offering a reward to help solve the murder of Caitlin McDonald. She was stabbed to death in March of 2017 at a home in the 3700 block of East Commerce near East Houston Street. Investigators questioned witnesses at the scene, but they were never able to identify a suspect. If you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. We are still working to learn the name of a man killed while crossing a northeast side road last night. San Antonio police say the victim was crossing FM 78 near North Foster Road about 10 o'clock. He was hit by an SUV. Investigators say one driver swerved to avoid hitting the man. Another driver didn't have time to stop. 
The man died at the scene. No charges are pending. Meantime, the Bear County Medical Examiner identifying an 80 year old man killed in a crash yesterday evening. He is Antonio Arismendez Martinez. According to San Antonio Police, his vehicle was T boned by a silver car near Covington and Rigsby yesterday at around 5 30. He died at the scene. At one point, the silver car caught fire. Three of the four people in that car taken to the hospital. One of the victims, a two year old, was at last check in critical condition. Now to the situation at the southern border, a bill aimed at establishing a $1 billion fund to support the Department of Homeland Security and other federal agencies has bipartisan support. The bill was created by Republican Congressman John Katko of New York and Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar of Texas. In order for the agencies to gain access to the funds, they will first need to develop a plan to respond to the number of migrants crossing the border. We'll be hearing from Congressman Cuellar coming up tonight on the News at 6. It's about to be Easter weekend, and this morning a group of volunteers from New Star Energy came together for an opportunity to give back to migrant kids staying at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall. About 2,000 Easter gift bags were filled this morning with everything from Easter eggs and snacks to colored pencils, T-shirts, and ball caps. We are a welcoming community. Um, we want people to be welcomed when they when they come here. Looking at these baggies, you know, I, I kind of, as I'm making it, I kind of want some of these things um, that I'm putting in the bag. And so I think they'll really enjoy, you know, what's in the bag or the surprises they get. New Star Energy worked with Spurs Give, the Food Bank, and other organizations to put the bags together. They'll be given to the children on Easter Sunday. Well, now that President Biden has laid out his $2 trillion infrastructure plan, the next step is to sell it. The plan calls for rebuilding things like roads, bridges, improving public transportation, the use of electric vehicles, and expanding broadband. The president says he'll look to key cabinet members to help push the plan forward, but members of both parties are already expressing reservations. I have real serious concerns that $2.25 trillion over eight years is not going to get us there. We ought to build that which we can afford. Today, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain said they hope to work with Republicans on this proposal and ideas for paying for it all, but he didn't rule out the possibility of Senate Democrats passing the bill on their own if they don't get Republican support. Tears and tissues in the courtroom during the trial of Derek Chauvin on Thursday. The former Minneapolis police officer is charged in connection with the death of George Floyd. Chauvin has pleaded not guilty. In the fourth day of testimony, the court heard details about Floyd's personal life from someone very close to him. Camilla Bernal in Minneapolis to explain. Tearful testimony from the girlfriend of George Floyd. <laughs> Floyd has this great, deep, Southern voice, raspy. For the first time, the courtroom heard about Floyd's life from the person he dated for nearly three years until his death. He asked me um, if he could get my number and we had our first kiss in the lobby. But they shared a struggle. Floyd and I uh, both suffered with an opioid addiction. It's a classic story of uh, how many people get addicted to opioids. We both suffered from chronic pain. We, 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 we got addicted and, and tried really hard to uh, break that addiction many times. It was your belief that Mr. Floyd started using again about two weeks prior to his death, correct? I noticed a change in his behavior, yes. The defense argues Floyd died from drug use and a heart condition, not from Derek Chauvin kneeling on his neck. The former Minneapolis police officer was still restraining Floyd when paramedics arrived. In lay terms, I thought he was dead. After paramedics put Floyd in an ambulance, Chauvin defended his actions. Gotta control, gotta control this guy because he's a sizable guy. In Minneapolis, I'm Camila Bernal. New voting restrictions approved in the state Senate this morning. This bill includes provisions to reduce options to cast ballots, puts limits on the polling hours, and gives more power to partisan poll watchers. It also aims to make it illegal for local election officials to proactively send applications to vote by mail to voters, even if they qualify. 
Republicans say the purpose of the bill is election security and integrity, and voting rights activists are calling the bill suppressive. The legislation is now headed to the Texas House of Representatives for consideration. By the way, today is the last day to register to vote in the next city and school election. You can check your registration status on our website, ksat.com. We also have information about what's on the ballot. By the way, election day is May 1st. Two new lawsuits have been filed against CPS Energy for its part in February's winter storm. The lawsuits filed by two San Antonio families last month. One suit filed March 19th says that a woman died days after a power outage at her home kept her from using her oxygen machine. The suit filed by the woman's son says the woman's emergency backup tank ran out and her physical condition deteriorated in the following days. The woman died on February 21st. The other lawsuit filed March 23rd has similar claims. The family of a man who died after his oxygen machine became inoperable during the outage is suing CPS Energy along with seven other power companies and ERCOT, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. Both lawsuits claim CPS Energy and other power companies could have increased electric production in the days ahead of the storm, but chose to do otherwise and they all failed to properly weatherize infrastructure. You can read more about these lawsuits and others right now on KSET.com. We actually felt a bit of a chill in the air this morning, particularly in the hill country. Check out Kerrville, Fredericksburg, 35 degrees for their low temperatures. Here in San Antonio, we started the day at 50 and then made it up to 71 for the high temperature. The average high 77. We've been running below average for a couple of days now. For the most part, we're right around the 70 degree mark, a little bit warmer in Floresville at 75, 72 just south of Lavernia, Bernie at 72 and 69 currently in Bulverde. This evening, beautiful. Not much of a breeze out there, just light and variable at about two to five miles per hour. Just some high thin clouds, temperatures falling to the 60s, then 50s. Low humidity, but another chill in the air tomorrow. And we'll talk about those weekend rain chances coming up. Thank you, Adam. A nonprofit is helping to bring some joy to kids of all ages at Methodist Children's Hospital. Dancing While Cancering was founded by Scott and Pammy Kramer after their three-year-old daughter, Maddie, lost a battle against a rare form of brain cancer in 2018. Methodist Children's Hospital marks the organization's 20th partnership to gift children who are newly diagnosed with cancer, a smile pack. It's filled with age appropriate items, including headphones and decorations for their hospital room. Methodist Children's Hospital says they're thankful to offer this support to families who never expected to have to embark on such a scary journey. I noticed such a difference being able to go in there with this backpack in hand. Um, this patient was especially excited about the headphones that were in the backpack. She was able to jam out to her music, kind of drown out all the, all the doctors and nurses. These smile packs are available for three different age groups. For more information or to donate, you can visit KSAT.com. Spring is here. If you plan to fire up the grill or start your spring cleaning but need a refresh on some of your equipment, now could be the best time to buy. So which items are on deep discount all month long? We'll tell you coming up next. Uh, whether it's a car, furniture, new pair of shoes, there tends to be a better time to snag a deal. Discounts on particular goods typically run in cycles. So as the calendar turns to April, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says if you're looking to fire up the grill or tackle spring cleaning, it's the best time to buy. These are the sounds of spring. Consumer Reports tracks prices all year and knows when certain things go on deep discount. So here are some of their top products in April's best time to buy. First up, grills. April is the first time of the year that you'll start to see sales on grills, and a large reason for that is because retailers have this back stock of older models that they need to get rid of to make room for the newer ones, so they discount them. They found this Dynaglow barrel-style charcoal grill for $223 at Walmart and Wayfair. Tester scored it well for even cooking, convenience, and cleanup. Another April sale, lawn mowers. One deal that stands out is the Ego battery-powered mower for $500 at Lowe's. And fall isn't the only time a leaf blower comes in handy. The Ego battery-powered handheld leaf blower is available for $150 at Amazon and Lowe's. 
It's the time for spring indoor cleaning too, and retailers know it. So to make sure they're the ones getting your business, they're offering deals and discounts. Time for a new vacuum? Consumer Reports likes the Shark Rotator Bagless Upright. It's $250 on Amazon. And if you're upping your curb appeal game, this snapper battery powered string trimmer is $241 on Amazon and at Home Depot. Just a few ways to clean up without cleaning out your wallet. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Consumer Reports also says April is the best time to buy replacement windows for your home and bicycle helmets. We want to take a look outside with live cam. This is Morgan's Wonderland. They're doing something a little bit different today. The Gordon Hartman Foundation organizing a vaccination event. All the appointments are filled, but you can see people are getting vaccinated. They're lined up right now. Special needs children <coughs> get priority. A great event going on right now at Morgan's Wonderland. And if you're going to have an outdoor event, you just couldn't paint a prettier picture out there. Absolutely. I mean, just fantastic outside today. Lack of humidity, bright sunshine, but it felt so good out there. And this is going to continue through the evening. Very beautiful conditions, low humidity, just some high thin clouds, comfortable temperatures. A bit of a chill in the air tomorrow morning again. We'll see a lot of 40s to start today and then a little bit of dampness as we get into the weekend. We're tracking an upper level system that's moving our way. We'll get to that and the newest drought monitor in a moment. First, let's talk temperatures and help you prepare for the day ahead. Outside across the state, fantastic. Mostly in the 60s to around 70 degrees. Midland at 67 along with Austin. We get to 70 in Hondo and Kerrville right now at 69. Even Fredericksburg at 66. 70 even in San Antonio. But we go to tomorrow morning, and it's going to be another one of those mornings where early risers, right at sunrise, you're going to feel a bit of a chill in the air briefly for a few hours. Our morning low temperatures should be widespread in the 40s and even near 40 in the hill country, possibly some upper 30s tomorrow morning in the hill country. Then by the afternoon, we warm up nicely. So despite a start at 41 in Bernie and Timberwood Park, we'll make it into the low 70s by the afternoon. So it's going to be very similar to what we had today, but I do think we'll knock off a few degrees from the morning lows compared to earlier today. So partly cloudy conditions, southeasterly breeze at 5 to 15. Those morning readings do climb a bit. So 40s widespread tomorrow morning. We get into Saturday, lower 50s, Easter Sunday, back into the upper 50s for low temperatures. And next week with the return of the humidity, look at those morning readings, muggy and in the 60s. So big changes are coming, particularly in terms of those morning low temperatures right around sunrise. Some thicker clouds far to the south of us. And we had some of those clouds linger through the night last night, which kept some of the temperatures up a little bit south of town. But that's it. That's all we have to talk about around here. It is a cold and active pattern, especially when you look off to the east. That's where the precipitation is. It's one of those opening days for baseball where it's snowing on some of the games. Even Detroit uh, had snow. You saw the first home run. Maybe you saw that video. It was in the snow. <laughs> Miguel Cabrera. There you go. Anyway, it's just one of those springs, I guess. But around here, we can't really muster up any of that moisture. You look at the upper level disturbance just south of Los Angeles. That's our weekend system. It's a weak one. It's basically going to give us some of that nuisance cloud cover that doesn't really do much for us, but it makes it look like it could rain at any moment. So let's go through time here. Upper low drops in early Saturday. It's going to affect us all weekend. We'll have low clouds, an overcast sky, a few hit or miss light sprinkles, very light showers here and there on Saturday. And then even to start the day on Sunday, I think we'll have some drizzle and light sprinkles. Accumulations, we're talking a few hundredths of an inch. I think that's the best we can do. So yeah, that nuisance cloud cover and overall a little bit of dampness, especially Easter morning, but it's not gonna really add up to much. Drought monitor, here it is. Not a better situation for us, especially south of San Antonio. That's where we have the worst drought. So tomorrow we'll start the day at 46, make it up to 72. Low humidity, another beautiful day, partly cloudy. Still comfortable through the weekend. Despite the clouds and a little bit of dampness, we'll be around 70 for highs. And the next week, ooh, we could be flirting with 90 by this time next week. Ooh, mm. wow. Here comes summer. 
Thank you, Adam. All right, whatever that happened to the Spurs last night, whatever they ate for the pregame meal, do it again. Do it again. Bottle it. Yeah. Bottle it. Keep yes. it. When we come back, what a difference a game makes. The Spurs rebound against the Sacramento Kings. We'll show you how they did it. And the Valero Texas Open is underway with the first round coming up. For the first time at home during this historic stretch, the Spurs finally look like the team we expect. As a result, they get revenge on the Sacramento Kings, and they pick up their second home win during this nine-game run. This is how it started, and the Spurs did not let up, starting with defense. Derek White forcing the turnover and then leaves it for DeJounte Murray, who post-rises Buddy Heel, who burned the Spurs a game before. Jakob Pertl denying Heel at this, the rim this time, and this time Murray finds Keldon Johnson for the one-handed punch. No second-quarter slump, thanks to Rudy Gay, who went three for three from three-point range in the first half and a 16-point lead at the break. Then DeMar DeRozan takes over in the third quarter, scoring 14 of his game high 26 points. One of seven players in double figures. The Spurs get their revenge, 120-106. to 106. So what was the big difference between Monday and last night? Came out more aggressive um, on both ends. Um, we made shots. That's always a, a big plus. Made shots. and For the most part, we just came out more aggressive. And they got to do it again tonight, this time against Atlanta at 7.30. As part of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, Final Four being hosted by San Antonio this year in conjunction with Nancy Lieberman Charities and San Antonio Sports. Today, the Hall of Famer unveiled a new basketball court on the city's east side by hanging nets at the Boys and Girls Club, and then Lieberman herself decided to play a little hoops as well. I have a lot of family in San Antonio, and to be able to come back and do something for the community and the kids means a lot to, to me personally. Very nice of her. The University of Texas has hired Texas Tech head coach Chris Beard to replace Shaka Smart who left the Longhorns for Marquette after another first-round loss in the NCAA tournament. Remember, Beard led the Red Raiders to the national title game in 2019 and the Elite Eight in 2018. After being canceled by COVID last year, the Valero Texas Open returned today with the first round of the JW Merritt TPC Resort course. And your early first-round leader today, Jordan Spieth, who birdies his number nine hole today, making a turn at five under. Right behind him is former San Antonian Abraham Anser, who also birdied his number nine to stay one stroke behind speed at the time on the back nine. Another big name in the field today, Ricky Fowler. This was for par, but take a look. Five under around this track's a good score. I'd take four more of them. I think tomorrow afternoon it's going to be as challenging as it was this morning, if not more, when we get a little breeze picking up. So I'll be probably chasing somebody around 10 under and just trying to, you know, hit fairways and greens. You're so right, because look at the leaderboard right now. We have a three-way tie. Speed held the lead as a clubhouse leader for most of the day, but you can see some late charging coming up behind him. Still have one golfer on the course there, Matsuyama, who, by the way, has a chance to take the lead in the last two holes. Are you surprised minus five is leading right now? Yeah, I am, because remember, they had a lot of wind earlier today. Right. It died down this afternoon. That's why you're seeing the scores start to pick up a little bit this afternoon. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.